This is the Loaded Radio Podcast. Hey, it's Scott Penfold, and this is the Loaded Radio Podcast. And joining me this week, I've got the one and only Rob Dukes, frontman for thrash band Generation Kill, and of course, he used to front a little band called Exodus. A Generation Kill of the new album out right now called MK Ultra, and it's out via Blood Blast Distribution and Art is War Records. It's a killer album that features guest appearances by Gary Holt from Slayer and Exodus, Chris Poland, former Megadeth player there, John Joseph from Chromags and Blood Clot, and even Grammy Award winning pianist Ronnie King, who guests some of the album tracks. A Generation Kill been around since 2008. They formed in New York City by Rob Dukes while he was on hiatus while touring with Exodus. So we're going to spend the next 30 minutes with Rob Dukes right here on the Loaded Radio Podcast. Now, Rob is joining us from a coffee shop in New York, so please forgive some of the background noise. But hey, Rob, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us on this week's Loaded Radio Podcast. I'm good. Great. Uh, thanks for taking Sorry. the time to talk to us. All right. But uh, first off, um, I got to tell you, man, uh, from what I've heard of MK Ultra, it sounds just uh, seriously like a seriously kick ass thrash album, man. Um, first cool. off, how was, it, how was it working with Nick Belmore on this one? It was good, man. Um, we had uh, we had been working with Zeus um, for a while uh, through the pre production phase and like going through um, all the tracks with him. And then he got tied up in a couple other projects and uh, couldn't meet our deadline, which was basically our fault anyway, because we kept rewriting songs. We we had like we threw away a bunch of stuff and started over and then like just we just kept wanting to make it better and better. So we it kind of pushed our own personal deadline back. And then um, when Zeus couldn't finish it, he goes, like, hey, man, this guy, Nick, is awesome. And uh, I've heard Nick's work. Uh, with some of Jamie's stuff. Yeah. And um, so uh, I gave him a call and he was, yeah, let's do it. And uh, and he got it done and it was, uh, you know, he, it was awesome and he was fucking great. I was actually just listening to uh, actually just checking out the video for Evil Eye before uh, I was talking to you too with Chris Poland from Megadeth. First off, before we get into the video, because I definitely want to talk about that, but how did you get involved with Chris Poland uh, for the track? Well, it, (sighs) I've always loved Chris's playing, you know, of course. I mean, he's, he was the, the, the most, ori- like one of the most original thrash guitar solos. Like when you hear his solos, you, you immediately, I, I, for me, I always knew that's Chris. You know what I mean? He had right. this really distinct sound. And uh, we had uh, Exodus and Ohm had played together at NAM probably eight years ago. And, uh, you know, I've always just been a, a fan of Chris's work. And when we had this song um, all put together and it didn't have solos yet, and I talked to uh, my guitar player and I was like, hey, man, if I, if I reach out to Chris and he sit, likes this song, would let's let him do the solos. And he was like, fuck yeah, let's do that. And then, <laughs> um, so I, I reached out to Chris uh, and um, – I, uh, I just said, hey, man, give this track a listen and tell me if you'd like to play on it. And uh, he hit me back five minutes later. He goes, absolutely. So I sent him, uh, you know, just a you know, two channel mix. And then I said, well, this is, you know, this is just a raw mix, but go ahead and lay your solos in there. And then, uh, you know, next, next two days later, he sent me back what he sent. And he's like, oh, if you want me to redo it, uh, I will. <laughs> And I looked to it, I was like, Chris, this is, this is fucking killer. Like, no, you don't need to redo it. Yeah, he was so such a humble and, and kind guy. And uh, I've always really liked him. Uh, I've, I've hung out with him a couple of times and uh, just a, a nice person. So it was it was awesome to have him be a part of that. And uh, so. That's great. Man. And Chris is certainly, he's one of those uh, guys that I think was really detrimental in forming thrash metal. So I think it's really cool that he's working with you, man. I think it was awesome. Yeah, no, he, um, he's one of those pioneers in the very beginning. And like I said, when you heard his tone and and the way he, the way he played, he was different than everyone else. And I, I, I I think I I attest that to his, his jazz background. Uh, I know Skolnick had a, had a jazz background also, but Chris had a very distinct tone and w- the way he bent notes, like he, he, it was almost like he wouldn't bend a note all the way to the, 
he would bend it like halfway or he would, it was just, he had a, just his like his tone with, to me, was always just very special. And, uh, and I was truly honored and, uh, and really grateful to have him be a part of the, uh, this record. Yeah. He killed it. Now, you know, the video as well, uh, very uh, strong Edgar Allan Poe influence, obviously, but it's, it's a very sinister video, yeah. I think a very, a very sinister sort of dark video. Where did the whole concept of that come about? Well, basically the song is about the telltale heart. I, I did that on purpose. Um, I actually um, took the egregious uh, <laughs> stance and actually uh, added a, a, another part to the story because the telltale heart, it actually ends um, at, w- with the police arresting him. And, um, yeah. and then I, I, I added the whole part of him being in an asylum and uh, wanting to get out so he can kill again. You know, um, so uh, I just... I read Moby Dick and I, I read um, just some older novels. I read uh, On the Road, uh, Jack Kerouac, and, and, I, and that one, just a, a book of El Gallo and poetry popped into my, or short stories popped into my uh, world. And I just, uh, when I read it, I remembered, um, it's a very short story. And I remember, you know, and being in like high school or maybe even junior high and just uh, uh, loving that story. And I said, I think I'm going to write about this. And I just, uh, you know, I put pen to paper and, and kind of did it. Yeah. Who directed the video again? Because it was really, really well done. Uh, my name is uh, Wacy Yan. Um, That's right. We met him through um, some of the, uh, we met him through the El Nino guys. He had done a video for El Nino. And yeah. uh, so we met him through there. And uh, he just, um, he, when he heard the song, he, he called me and he says, Hey man, I really love this song. And, um, you know, let's, I, I want to do something very special for it. And, uh, and I said, I said, yeah, man, I said, um, let's do that. I said, I was thinking very David Fincher esque yeah. slash seven slash, you know, nine inch nails videos. Let's, I mean, I was, I just, I wanted it really dark and yeah. I think YouTube has already fucking pulled it for some fucking because it's too, really? too <laughs> fucked up, but yeah, I mean, or they, yeah. So we're, we're appealing that right now with them, but yeah, it was like the silly, Oh, we think it's too dark and too fucked up and yeah, <laughs> but it's not more fucked up than anything. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's not even, I, I I'm blown away by these, uh, the responses that we get from, uh, you like YouTube, like, so I did an interview with, uh, I interviewed, um, this guy, Tom O'Neill, who wrote the book Chaos, which is basically this album is based around uh, that book. Yeah. And I did an interview with him and they flagged it and they won't tell me why they flagged it yet. And I think it's because we were shitting on the CIA and the, <laughs> and the whole, like, they won't tell me why they flagged it. Yet. We're, we've appealed it yesterday and uh, we're waiting for a response. And um, yeah, so what happens, I think, with YouTube is um, it's an automated response thing and then a person sits and watches yeah. it but i mean this video is no darker than anything marilyn manson has put out or I, I i actually don't even i don't even watch a lot of videos but i watch movies and shit and it's not i mean it, to me it doesn't it, it doesn't scream any of that but well i think once somebody watches they'll be like oh yeah it's just you know i mean it's fucking edgar Allan poe man i yeah. mean Jesus Christ. I also want to ask you about Gary Holt's involvement with the album. Now, Gary, uh, does he appear on just one or two tracks or? He's on one track. He's on the track Never Relent, which also has a video, which is way worse uh, violence wise than the Edgar Allen, than the Evil Eye video. Oh, is it? And they never flag that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gary's on the, he was on the first track we released. Um, when I wrote it, I had Gary in mind and I, I wrote it and then uh, me and Jason uh, wrote it and then um I, we sent the the raw tracks to gary and it was funny too man he did the same thing that uh john joseph did to me he was like well i'm really busy but you know let me hear the track and then i sent him the track and it's like oh yeah okay i'm in yeah <laughs> so which which was like oh they wanted to make sure the song was good enough to really to play on it you know and okay. uh but uh gary killed it and uh it was it was fucking great to have him on it and uh you know it's cool to you know, have your friends on your record and shit. I, I don't know if I would uh, do it again. I just, we had a lot of time with this one because of COVID and because of just 
you know, just taking our time with it. We weren't under the gun of anything. And uh, we, we basically at one point just made our own kind of deadline because, you know, what we kept doing was we kept going back and redoing stuff and like, I oh, know we could do that better. We could do this better. You know, let's, this song's kind of fucking weak and you know, we can make it better. And we just kept doing that. And then I, I heard an interview with, with David Gilmore and he says, you know, no, I never really finish an album. I just abandon it because if I don't abandon it, I'll just keep redoing it. And I, and I took that, I, that stuck with me. And I was like, well, that David Gilmore thing. Yeah. We better just, just come up with a date and be finished by that. And that's what we did. And yeah. And, and having Gary on it, he recorded it early, like 2019. I mean, he, it was just oh, like, really? we had an entire record and we threw it, we threw it away and started over. And then, um, and then Gary was part of the first track that we did. And the, and it just, you know, it just kept us, it, it just changed. The, the dynamic of the record changed. We, uh, it just, uh, it took on a life of its own and, and, um, you know, and, um, I think it's a, I think it's the best thing I've, I've ever done in my life. I mean, musically it's, it's, um, sonic and, I, and, uh, lyrically, I don't, I think I've, I've worked really hard on it and I'm really proud of it. Not like, Oh, this is the, I'm not saying this is the best thing I've ever done for, for ego reasons. Just my personal, when I listen to it, I'm, I'm just really proud of it and just tried to, I gave it all my all, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and um, so, and I, and I know everybody in the band did too. They, they all gave their, they, they gave, you know, all their, the best. And uh, there's not a, there's not a weak moment on the whole thing. And I'm, I'm very proud of that. So you saying that you th- there was, you had a full album's worth of material done that you just threw away. Was it like, what yeah. was the reason? What happened? Well, we changed bass players and anything that that guy was a part of, we decided to throw it away. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even want to say his fucking name. That's how <laughs> fucking bad it went. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I hear you, dude. All good, man. Now, um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess getting back to, to Gary and your relationship with Gary, do you still have a relationship with the guys in Exodus today? Yeah, I do. Um, matter of fact, I, me and Tom talked yesterday about uh, basketball and oh, cool. uh, hockey. So, I mean, when I, when, when Exodus fired me, you know, it, uh, so it took me about a year to not be angry about it. And, and then, you know, it was, a, it was, it, you know, it was unexpected and I, and I, I didn't see it coming and it was, it was a hard time in life, man. I just, sure. I just moved. I had just got married. I just, you know, it was like a, it was, it was, a, it was a heavy burden and it took me a while. And then about a year later, um, you know, after, you know, Gary called me, and um and we spoke and then uh they flew me up to san francisco and and uh i sat down with them we uh laid it out on the table and um then it was it was like uh it made it better you know what i mean it just yeah. it it just it cleared the the wreckage of that and uh and i moved on with my life and, and they moved on with their life and and uh, but um uh, you know, I did a one show with them. I did a, a few songs up in San Francisco. And then, uh, you know, and then I just started living my own life. It was definitely a part of my life, but I, I don't um, rely on it. So I, I, I just moved forward. And, yeah. But our friendship is, is good, man. I went up there to see um, after Tom got sick. We were talking the entire time. And I, I was aware of his situation. And then... Um, and then when when the time was right, when he was in a uh, he it was after he had done some chemo sessions and was feeling a little better, I went up. I flew up and, and spent a couple of days with Tom, and yeah. um, and I saw I saw Gary, and I went and had lunch with Lee, and, and you know I mean look man, we were we were we lived together for ten years. You know what I mean? Yeah. How could you? That bond is uh, very difficult to break. You know even and especially when it was. Uh, the reason I got fired, it, it wasn't personal. It was business. You know, um, yeah. I, I took it personally in the beginning, but you know, business, this is a harsh business, man. And there's a lot of fucking snakes out there. There's a lot of weird people who want their, their little piece, you know? And, uh, yeah. that's kind of what happened. It was just business. <laughs> but, and you know what, man, I mean, looking back on it, it's, it was all for the best, you know? So, even looking at the band, that, that that band that is Exodus, I mean, aside from Gary and Tom, there have been a lot of personnel changes within that band. Uh, why do you think that is? 
because it's hard to live with people. It's hard to get along with people. And yeah. it's hard to be on the same page. It's hard to, I mean, being a band is like being married to four or five people. And then every once in a while, you know, somebody doesn't do the dishes and it fucking causes a fucking mayhem. <laughs> right. You know, you know, <laughs> you know uh, it's, it's, it's never about the dishes. It's about other shit. You know, it's, I mean, from my experience, I mean, I've watched it in other bands and I've watched it in my own life and, and resentment is a motherfucker. Resentment will eat at you. And it's not always, it's not always apparent of what it's doing. Sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're resentful, you're not conscious of it. It's just like this subconscious resentment and it starts to build and it starts to eat away at you. And then one day, man, you, you fucking, and it's never anything big. It's always, it's not like a death. You know what it is? It's like breaking your shoelace. You just, it just, it just, you snap. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and, and I think that, that is what destroyed me. I think what destroys fans is ego not being on equal footing financially. I, I learned it from Rush that, you know, whatever the band makes, everyone gets an equal cut, no matter what they do, what they bring to the table. If you're in the band, you get an, you get an equal cut. And when that doesn't happen, and some people make more money than others, and, you know, you don't want that to be the end-all be-all because it's all about the camaraderie and the music and the, and the stint. But you know what, man? I mean, eventually, you're not teenagers living in a van living together off, you know, really no money, all of a sudden you have, you know, you have families involved and you have mortgages and you have bills to pay and you have, uh, you know, car payments and insurance and health shit and, you know, dental stuff and all that shit. And I mean, people don't, I, I, I don't really think people realize what, what it is, you know, and then you're, you, when you get all tangled up in that and, and being in a band is, it's feast or famine. I mean, you'll, you can make a bunch of money on tour, but you know, you know but how long does that last? I and mean, you got to go do another one. You got to do another one. You yeah. got to do another one. And, and touring isn't cheap, man. Touring was never cheap. Touring is expensive. And you're lucky if you make money. I mean, um, sometimes you do tours just to break even. And, you know, we were doing that in the beginning of when I joined Exodus. And we were just breaking even. And we weren't. You know, it took us a couple of years to make some money and, and uh, you know, and then, the, you know, like I said, it, it was feast and famine. I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have health insurance for like, you know, five or six years because yeah. I just couldn't afford it. <clears throat> you know, I couldn't afford that monthly payment. And, and that's kind of sad. You know what I mean? No, I, I, um, I'll never forget, man. We were, we were in on tour and we realized that we weren't going home with any money that we were we were broke even and we were going home even but all the crew were getting paid like like 3500 bucks a piece for the six weeks they were out and 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 that resentment man i mean it was that was a hard one to swallow i mean honestly not for me at the time because i had been a crew guy and i understood that they were doing all the work they were doing all the heavy lifting of all the shit um, <laughs> but when the tour ended we we were we were dumbfounded that um, we had got put into a situation where we had to go on tour to not make any money and to break even. And, and everyone had to go home. And this was right before Christmas with no money. Uh -huh. And, you know, and, and you're like, look, man, just because you're, you're in Europe for six weeks doesn't mean, you, oh, you get to put your mortgage on hold or your car payment or your car insurance or, you know, the bills that you have at home. They, they keep rolling. Like you have to figure out how to, you know, and I remember going home after six weeks and, and, uh, and, and the money I had in savings was, was I had to use it all. And I was back at zero. And I remember, I remember just, um, I remember just not being like angry about it, but I remember just being sad. I was just like, dude, like, what have I sacrificed for this? You know? And, um, and, and then, you know, then, then you get those moments, right? Right. So that's like the lowest end you can be at where you're, you're, you're living in this, in this situation. And then something simple will happen where you make a phone call to Chris Cohen and he says, yeah, I really like your music and I want to be a part of it and I want to play on it. And there's no real price tag on it. Like right. that, that alone 
makes up for all that, all the sh- shit that, that we sacrifice to do this. And, and, you know, that's why not a lot of people get to go do what, what we get to do. And I, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the experiences that I've had because I could have never had them just uh, living a regular life with a nine to five job and doing all that and, and the sacrifices that we've made. I'm not whining about it, but there were legitimate sacrifices that, that, you know, I, I remember watching Lee be on tour and just missing his kids. I don't have any kids and I didn't know what that was like, but I watched it and I felt bad for him. But um, I, I remember how, how awful it felt for him. And, and I couldn't understand, you know, um, but he, but he also loved playing. He also loved being a part of the band and he also loved, you know, being on stage and, I forget how we got on this deep conversation. <laughs> it's all good, man. But it just comes down to the, you know, there's a lot of give and take to being in a band. If you can get past and, and be honest about the resentment and you, if you can be honest with your bandmates and have an honest relationship and an honest friendships with them, it'll be fun as shit. But what I think what tears bands apart is ego. And, you know, I know of a band recently I heard of where, you know, the guitar player started banging the singer's wife behind his back. That's not good. And I'm like, that's fucking evil, man. Yeah. And that kind of shit happens too. I, I mean, I've never experienced it myself, but, um, but I, I heard about it recently on a tour and, um, or the singer banged the guitar players or something like that. I forget what it was, but it was, right. it was bad. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Getting back no. to Generation Kill, though, I mean, and, and it goes right wrong with what we've been talking about, is it's essentially been you and uh, guitarist Jason Trenzer since 2008. How is that relationship with you and Jason? Well, it's been me and Trenzer and Velez. Um, Velez uh, replaced Lou in 2009 when Lou passed away. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, me and Trenzer, so I've been friends with Trenzer since I was 15 years old. I met him in in, uh, in high school. So you know, me and Trenzer, um, I love Jason like a brother. I mean, he's he was one of my um, oldest friends. I mean, and we always played in other bands. We were never in a band together until 2008. Yeah, um, we'd always just um, had been. We'd been in other bands that played together, but we always just, we were always friends. We've been friends for, for a really long time. And I remember when I was, when we were younger, he was always the best guitar player of, of everybody in, in, the, in the scene I was a part of. And, um, but I've watched him uh, over the last, you know, 10 years uh, playing with him in or eight years. He has just been phenomenal. Um, I remember when we worked with Bumblefoot Bumblefoot produced some music with us and yep. um, Jason got to sit down with, with Ron and Ron, you know, Bumblefoot's one of the greatest, he's one of the best guitar players in the world. And, yep. and you know, he's, and, uh, and it changed um, Jason's uh, playing. And I, I mean, I, I can honestly say, man, I, I've played with, you know, Gary Holt and Leontis. And I've, I've watched guys like Michael Lamont and I watched, uh, you know, just great, phenomenal guitar players and and uh, and Trenzer is he's up there with them he's he is that talented he is that good he's um solid rhythm player i mean he's a total goofball i mean yeah. you know um but he's uh, funny and he's he, he's a a great you know uh, songwriter he writes killer riffs and you know and i think the three of us i think between me Trenzer and and uh and jason velez we just uh to me it's the it, we, we complement each other well and like i said man this, this album is, this is the best thing i've ever done in my life the hardest i've ever worked and we you know looked at it with a microphone with a magnifying glass and and uh and, and uh, i'm very we're all very very proud of it now you know being a, a, who you are in thrash metal so you're such a you know a, a dominant part of that genre as a whole who are some thrash metal bands that you're currently into right now I like I I found this band. They're actually not a thrash band, but they're just really good. There's a band called Hong Kong Sleepover. They're from uh, I think they're from Illinois or Minnesota, like in the Midwest somewhere. I really like them. Uh, Hatchet, I, I really like. I, I mean, I honestly uh, I don't listen to a lot of um, thrash on a regular basis. I I'm more of a Pink Floyd, Old Judas Priest, Clash, and you know. Um, 
I, I'm a dude. I also, you know, I mean, also run the jewels. I listen, to, I listen to everything, man. I, yeah. that, my new favorite, my new favorite album is the new Black Keys album. I mean, that album is fucking phenomenal. Before that, it was. I was listening to. Um, I know the new the Clutch has a new record coming out, so I was listening to a lot of Clutch. And um, there's a band called the Company Band. Yeah. Um, with, with Neil Fallon and Jesse Margera from CKY. Uh, I really like that band a lot, man. Um, they haven't had anything out in a while, but me and Jesse have been talking, and I'm trying to get down to his studio to to work with him on some stuff. That would and, be fucking um, killer, dude. That would be awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Me and Jess just uh, was out in Arizona, and we hung out and, and had a cigar and, and, uh, and hung out for a few hours while he was uh, in a layover with flights. And uh, uh, yeah, man. So I mean, I, I listened to a lot of stuff, dude. I mean, this morning I, I was listening. To- I had on the cure. <laughs> oh, you're <know>? great, I mean, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, it's, most of the time thrash comes on when I'm, um, I got a, a, like an old, old Corvette. And I, I when I drive fast, and I, I get in a bed, I'm going to go tear some shit up and drive like an asshole. Um, <laughs> that's when thrash comes on. And I know, honestly, man, I mean, it, it'll, 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 I, I, a lot of times it's like ride the lightning or master of puppets or, you know, even bonded by blood or, you know, uh, uh, rain and blood or something. It seems like those albums that I listen to between the age of like 15 and 20 are the staple of my life, you know, um, like sad wings of destiny and queen. I mean, those are the albums that just, they, they move me. They, you know, they, they've reached down into my, uh, into the center of my being and they've become the staple of what I, what makes me uh, feel comfortable. And, and um, but I do put on Pandora. I'll put in like, I'll put in something new, like I'll put in hatchet radio or something like that. Or, and, and it'll play stuff I, that I'm not aware of, which is kind of cool. Especially when you're like, Oh, dude, what the fuck is this? And you look over and you go, Oh fuck, man. It's the new municipal waste. <laughs> or it's the new obituary. Yeah. yeah. Or the new carcass. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, right. every, you know, <laughs> so, um, and then you find, I found bands like Shat. You ever heard Shat? Dude? No, no. Are they good? Dude, they're, <laughs> they're insane yeah man <laughs> shat led to like diane word and diane word led to fucking that's the cool thing about uh some of these uh streaming sites um i wish they paid better to the artists that make the music but yeah um, agreed. it does it does allow me to to find new bands that i'm not aware of you know because i uh you know i'm old man i'm 50 fucking four so you know uh but when i do when i do like okay so like for instance i got when the, when the last tool record came out like i bought it and i put my fucking best headphones on and i lit a cigar and i read along with the words and i listened to the album in its entirety and, and that's how i listen to music i do the same thing i did i did that with the black keys i did that with run the jewels i did that with you know, all the new stuff that comes out, like the new Clutch album, I'm so looking forward to hearing that album, Me sitting too. down as a whole, listening to the whole thing. So, yeah, man. All right, Rob, thanks so much, man. It's been an honor talking to you, man. Really, really has. Thanks, man. Um, I'll see you out there. Yeah, you definitely will. Take care, pal. Peace. And there he is. That's Rob Dukes. He is the front man for Generation Kill. And yeah, he spent some time in Exodus as well, but did the new album from Generation Kill, MK Ultra. It's out now, and it's great, man. It's a killer album front to back. If you're an aficionado of the thrash metal genre this is definitely some essential listening for you and as rob said you know it's one of those albums where you can put on your headphones and just experience it front to back it's just such a great release don't forget to check out loadedradio.com for all your hard rock and metal news on a daily basis it's updated constantly also there you get the 24-hour radio station past podcasts with the biggest names in hard rock and metal and so much more you can also download the loaded radio app which gives you access to all that cool stuff too and i'll be back again next week for an all-new edition of the loaded radio podcast so on behalf of everybody at loaded radio and LoadedRadio.com. We'll talk to you then. Loaded Radio.